This is Mac OS Ken. Apparent good news for iPhone in China. A troubling investigation for TSMC. And Ted Lasso looks to be back on the production schedule. It is Monday, the 21st of October, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Incognate. Helping you take back your personal data. Get 60% off an annual plan with code MacOSCAN at incogni.com slash MacOSCAN. This show is also sponsored by 1Password Extended Access Management. Does your workforce always, like every time, without exception, always work on company-owned devices and IT-approved applications? If your answer is no, or if you can't say for sure, what are you doing to protect your business? Your company's data could be sitting on unknown and unmanaged apps and devices. Yikes. Get a closer look and a firmer handle with 1Password Extended Access Management. It puts unmanaged devices, unknown applications, and rogue IDs that your employees might be using under your control, making sure every user credential is strong and protected, every device is known and healthy, and every app is visible. 1Password Extended Access Management solves the problems traditional identity and access management and mobile device management miss. It's security for the way people work today. It's available now to companies with Okta and Microsoft Entra and in beta for Google Workspace customers. Learn more at onepassword.com slash macOSCan. That's the number one. onepassword.com slash macOSCan. So maybe iPhone 16 sales haven't been bad. Apple Insider cites new numbers from CounterPoint Research indicating that not only have sales of Apple's latest phone in China not been bad, they've actually been better than last year. According to the report, CounterPoint Research claims that so far, the whole range has done better in China than its predecessor. That's despite the iPhone 15 range having exceeded sales expectations at launch in 2023. Personally, I find the numbers tough to track. According to the report, and a report from Reuters, sales for the iPhone 16 line were up 20% in the first three weeks of availability versus iPhone 15 in its first three weeks. Sales for the two latest Pro phones were up 44% versus iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max models for the corresponding time period. And sales of iPhones across the board were actually down 2% year-over-year, partly due to competition from Huawei and partly because of a decline in sales of older iPhones. Though not mentioned in the counterpoint pieces, we should probably also remember the slow roll last year for iPhone 15 Pro Max. That was thanks to a camera component issue that created sort of a bottleneck. Totes turned on by the counterpoint count was Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives. Apple 3.0 ran part of a note he wrote. After going over some of the numbers, the 20% increase for the whole line in the first three weeks and the 44% increase for the Pro Pro Max models, the analyst said counterpoint's take is consistent with his firm's recent Asia trip and supply chain checks that they believe China sales for iPhone 16 will show a strong rebound over the next year, with the beginning of this AI-driven supercycle led by iPhone 16. In a nutshell, says the analyst, while the long-standing bears have been trying to yell fire in a crowded theater with iPhone mathematical gymnastics, the reality is this iPhone 16 cycle is strong and will be a major growth catalyst for Cupertino over the coming year, with a monster holiday season likely on deck as bulls get the popcorn ready. Bulls eating popcorn in a crowded theater while watching gymnastics. Man, where's Apple Image Playground when you need it? Mr. Ives has an outperform rating on Apple shares. 
His price target on the shares is $300. While sales may not be a problem for iPhone 16, freezing and restarts seem to be for some. According to a piece from Apple Insider, users of Apple's latest phones, especially iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max, say units are freezing then restarting themselves seemingly randomly. Talk on Reddit and in Apple's own support communities have some reporting issues with the devices out of the box, at least one user says it happened not only with the unit they bought, but also with the unit Apple gave them as a replacement. iOS 18.0.1 does not fix the issue, according to commenters, though Apple Insider had one user saying that restoring the iPhone 16 from a backup on their Mac, rather than iCloud, resolved the issue. No word on how many people might be affected, though, it is far from affecting all users, according to the report. So far, Apple has not commented on the issue. While folks fret over freezing phones, there may be a bigger problem for future models of Apple's communicator. A piece from 9to5Mac says the U.S. Commerce Department is investigating Apple's chip-making partner, TSMC. They're said to be looking into whether the Taiwanese company violated U.S. sanctions against China by selling 5G and AI chips to Huawei. After a few years of sanctions-inspired sales weakness, Huawei surprised the planet last year by introducing 5G phones of its own. While there were several potential explanations, according to 9to5Mac, somebody breaking U.S. sanctions to supply 5G chips to Huawei always seem the most likely of these. Now, a piece from the information says that someone may have been TSMC. It is now suspected of having supplied 5G and AI chips to Huawei, according to the report, using U.S.-made equipment. Of course, there's pretty much no way TSMC would have sold to Huawei directly, the report says it's likely that orders were placed in the names of intermediary companies. Still, it would have been incumbent upon TSMC to carry out due diligence checks to establish the identity of the end user. If it did not, the cost could be high for the chip maker and its partners, up to and including Apple. Not that Apple would be implicated. Rather, it could be collateral damage. Quoting the information, the report says if the Commerce Department found that TSMC breached export rules in its dealings with Huawei, it could impose a fine or more severe penalties, such as temporarily restricting TSMC's ability to access U.S. tech. For its part, TSMC says it's done nothing wrong. 9to5Mac also has the company saying that it's fully cooperating with the investigation, and is taking its own steps to determine whether its checks failed. India is trying to bully Apple and others into building personal computers on the subcontinent. Did I say bully? I meant incentivize. A piece from Apple Insider says the country wants to sharply cut imports of laptops in order to force all technology firms to boost local manufacturing. You might remember India trying this last year. Back then, they made the restrictions effective immediately. Those restrictions were rescinded almost immediately, according to the report, after protests from Apple and other tech companies. This time, sources in the Indian government tell Reuters that the government plans to open consultations with manufacturers on the issue by the end of this month, while manufacturers are likely to be as unhappy this time as last, the piece points out that companies require a license to import products into India, and those licenses are currently set to expire at the end of this year. The thinking seems to be the computer makers have to have seen this coming over the past year and are likely ready to play ball, or cricket, that said, the sources indicate that the government could delay implementing the import restrictions by a few months, if necessary. 
More news in a moment. But first, I am happy to welcome a new sponsor to Mac OS Ken, Incogni, helping you take back your personal data. From shopping habits to employment history to full names and addresses, there is a ton of information about us online. They can be used to target us with ads. They can be used to decide some insurance rates. It can be used to steal our identities. And, here in the States at least, it can be collected and sold over and over and over. The good news, you can have that info removed. The bad news, you have to know how and it can take time. And you'll have to do it over and over again. Or you could work with Incogni. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests removal of your personal data, and deals with any of the broker's objections. Of course, it's the job of data brokers to keep collecting and selling your info. That's why Incogni runs repeated removal requests. Whenever a new record is created on a data broker's site, Incogni's ready with another removal request. All you have to do is create an account, let them work on your behalf to get your information removed, and breathe a bit easier. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Get 60% off an annual plan with code macOSCAN at incogni.com slash macOSCAN. That is a great savings and it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I-N-C-O-G-N-I. Get 60% off an annual plan with code macOSCAN at incogni.com slash Mac OS Ken. High Weirdness by Beta. Mac Rumors ran a piece Friday that had Apple seeding the sixth beta of Vision OS 2.1 to developers. Odd for a few reasons, including came on a Friday, came just days after the fifth developer beta, and came on its own. No major new features have been found in Vision OS 2.1, according to the report, though minor feature changes and bug fixes are anticipated. The public release of Vision OS 2.1 is expected one week from today. Rumor and conjecture have Apple releasing iOS 18.1, Mac OS Sequoia 15.1, and the rest on Monday, the 28th of October. If you're thinking of getting a pair of Powerbeats Pro ahead of the new ones, it is too late to get them from Apple. Mac Rumors says the Cupertino company has discontinued the stoppers well ahead of next year's Powerbeats Pro 2. Referred to in the piece as a fitness-focused alternative to AirPods Pro, the old Powerbeats Pro featured Apple's H1 chip, IPX4 rated moisture and sweat resistance, as much as 9 hours of battery life, four sizes of silicone ear tips, all held on by adjustable ear hooks. Henson Code showed the Powerbeats Pro 2 featuring heart rate monitoring during workouts, active noise cancellation, spatial audio, and adaptive audio. Seems likely that they will also harness the power of Apple's H2 processor instead of the H1. Additionally, the piece says other potential upgrades include improved sound quality, longer battery life, a USB-C charging case, and improved cross-platform compatibility with Android features like Find My Device. Apple has not said specifically when Powerbeats Pro 2 will make the scene, just sometime in 2025. That said, between teasing the product and hints in iOS 18... Sometime in the first half of 2025. Feels like a safe bet. And finally today, Season 4 of Ted Lasso is all but official, with production apparently set to start one week into the new year. A piece from Apple Insider says the production list, maintained by the Film and Television Industry Alliance, has now added Ted Lasso Season 4 to its list of shows in production or development. Most details are redacted in the publicly viewable version, but it says that shooting is to take place in London 
and unspecified locations in the U.S. While multiple locations are listed, there's only one date so far, the 6th of January, 2025. Additionally, there's only one date listed, but the show does show as a series, and it does say Season 4, so it's not a special or a one-off. As official as all of that sounds, there is nothing officially official yet. Neither Apple nor any of the show's associated production companies have made any announcements about a Ted Lasso continuation. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by 1Password Extended Access Management. Learn more at onepassword.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Incogni. Get 60% off an annual plan with code macOSCan at incogni.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.